there's this old bartender's trick wherein the bartender bets you a beer that you can't do this. You take the bait and give it a go. You fail. The bartender shows you again. Again, you fail. The bartender, like a puppeteer, takes your hands and shows you how it's done. You still can't do it. But after some fiddling on your own, eventually you get it. The cork trick, you see, is not a trick that can be readily taught. The cork trick must be learned. The same is true to a certain extent with surfing. Learning to surf is, well, what the hell do I know? I've been at it for 26 years and this is about the best I can do. And let's face it, most of the time I'm more like this. Um, and you know, it's overcast, it's scary, and I slammed into Sam twice, and so I have all the shame and stuff, but, I mean, I don't want to fake, make face, fake false claims about, oh, it's so much fun, oh, surfing is so much fun, it is fun, but I think I'm still a little mixed up with bringing all these standards of achievement into it. I know I'm repeating this a lot, but, it, you know, it's like, old habits die hard. Anyway, it's, it was really fun catching and riding a really long one. What do you think, Slice? I think you're doing great, man. This is Sinar. He's eight. Yep. His uncle is showing him how to attach his leash to his board. And his dad still straps it to his ankle. Sinar is what surfers call a grom, grom, one of those surfer words, short for grommet. I looked it up. The Urban Dictionary says that groms are known not just for surfing, but for surfing with all their hearts, with passion like any professional. Sinar can't teach us what he knows. He doesn't even know what he knows. He just knows it. And we have a mansion. We have a mansion. You don't have to be mad. You just have to listen. We have a mansion. We have the best teachers. We've got a fleet of three vehicles. We've got board caddies. We've got individuals carrying our boards in and out of the vans, in and out of the water for us. Professional grade surfboards. We have custom made tops in four different thicknesses. We've got two different board short bottoms, gender specific tops, wax, custom fins, leashes. We've got Rizal. How do you say Rizal's last name? We don't know. We've got Rizal, we've got Pat, and we've got Marlon teaching us the best waves that the world can offer, the waves of Bali, Indonesia, 
batang batang and airports. We've got drone riding analysis. We have a jet ski towing us in and out of waves so that we have more strength to paddle. We've got nasi goreng and mie goreng, best possible surf food, smoothies, antibiotics for our bali belly. We have puppies to greet us when we get home. We have everything we want, we have everything we need, and yet, And yet, we stink! And then on day seven of this trip, we're all kind of like really beaten up and it doesn't feel like fun and what the fuck are we, why are we doing this? Like, medevac me back to like Babylon, please. This is a movie about bad surfers on the long, painful road to becoming okay surfers. We range in ability from first time greenhorns to tried it here, tried it there. to 20 plus year veterans. We are, all of us, bad. We, all of us, have bad attitudes. Well, all of us but Sarah. Each surfer has come with a goal, a surfing goal. I surfed back home for over 20, 20 years and I just want to learn to enjoy it. <sighs> My goal is to catch a wave and jump onto another surfer's board. My goal is to ride the blue wave. My biggest fear is sharks and getting hurt. And my goal is to be able to surf well enough that I look cool in a picture. I'm doing it for the likes. In pursuing these goals, we have come away with 10 insights. In short, what we've learned about learning. Learning how to surf. For surfers, these waves are sacred space. You're looking at 24 of them waiting for a set to roll in. A set is a group of waves. Waves come in little groups called sets. All of these surfers are good. They all know the rules. There's rules, surfing rules. Who gets to go when, whose wave is whose. On top of the rules, there's the skills. You can't just catch a wave from anywhere. You have to be precisely in the right spot. And it takes years to learn just exactly where that spot is. And it's different spot for every wave. Now, if you're a beginner, you don't wanna be out there with these surfers as you're trying to learn. They've already put in their time, you haven't, and you could hurt them. These waves are knee high, and look at the trouble they give us. Watch our boards go flying. Now take a look at this wave. It's barreling. That means you can stand up inside. Well, not you. An expert can stand up inside. Take a look over to the left. Ankle deep water. Overhead waves that break into ankle deep water. 
imagine the consequences. It takes quite a long time to catch a wave. Time mostly spent waiting and paddling, and paddling. After two minutes and 30 seconds or so, Rizal points out the set to Tom and tells him to get into position. Right now Rizal is saying, paddle, paddle, paddle. And Tom's missed it. Okay, try again. Three minutes, 30 seconds. Another wave. Paddle, paddle, paddle. Paddle harder. Missed it. Try again. Rizal suggests another spot where the waves might be better. Punker Pat comes along. Paddle, paddle, paddle. 445, still paddling. Notice how much faster and with what ease Rizal on the Rasta board pulls his board through the water. He's a pro. 748, more paddling to change position. Tom still has not caught a wave. 803, Rizal gives Tom the go ahead. Paddle, paddle, paddle. Eight forty-seven, waiting for another wave. And nine eleven, we switch cameras. Here we go. He's got it. He's up. One, two, three. Nine minutes and twenty-two seconds of paddling and waiting. A three and a half second ride. Let's watch that ride again from another angle. Paddle, he's up, and he's down. Three and a half seconds. In addition to paddling, surfing has three main fundamentals. The first is catching a wave. The second is standing on a wave. And the third is riding a wave. Okay, now let's watch a pro do it. Catch, stand, ride. Experience keeps a good school, but a fool will learn in no other. You could go ahead and try to figure out the 10,000 subtleties to these fundamentals yourself, and some of us fools have. But a master can double, maybe triple, your learning speed with his expertise. This is the same break as Pat's wave, but on a big day. This is Sinar's father, Rizal. Rizal Tanjung. 
Rizal is a world-class pro. Pro skill, pro experience, pro style. We're not getting there, no way. But maybe we can come away from this trip with just a little of his pro attitude. Day in, day out, Rizal pushed us into waves, drilled us on technique, patiently explained to us the fundamentals. He cared. It was as if he was teaching us how to love surfing. Okay. <laughs> My goal is to get the ten bullet team to have fun while they learn. happy more smile you can see surfing is fun surfing should be fun sport it's not a stressful sport when you're having fun you're gonna think everything gonna get better and better and smooth. suffering because I have the standards of a professional but the experience of a novice even though it's been spread out over 30 years of dicking around with this activity. And, you, know, you meet someone like Rizal who's like you know appears to be such a fully realized individual with family and business and home and a perfect view and an incredible athlete. Yeah. The tough thing is achievement on an empirical level, like comparing yourself with the standards of others. Comparing ourselves to others will not help us learn, and it won't help us grow. We should compare ourselves to our past selves. Among our team members, the surfer who embodied Rizal's pro attitude was Sarah. She was in it to have fun, to look good in the pictures and look at her go. And I pushed myself into some waves without any help, which I, as of two days ago, thought I would literally never do for the rest of my life. So I feel a real sense of accomplishment about that. And I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like I see how you get better now. And I see how you want to do it more and more and why you would want to do bigger waves. Your turn. Generally, when we're new at something, we don't feel deserving of expert resources. We feel like we deserve the rental skates. But sometimes, an indulgence can enhance our education. When learning to surf, it is a great luxury to have solitude. The best way to access that solitude is with a boat. Usually it's the experts who rent the boats, and the experts generally stay away from the beginner waves. So as beginners with a boat, we basically had these waves all to ourselves.
the left side where the channel and this, go around. Yeah. Don't, don't where, fight where the boat is now. Always go right. Always go right. Aim for the boat, yeah. Boat's just always right away all the way. If you're tired, just you know, stand up, don't bend too, you know, don't like squat too hard, just chill, relax. Remember that? Have fun. You can oh, yeah. do whatever you want, like with your hand, you know, position you want to stand up low or high. Okay. They look a bit big. Bro. Is that the butterfly? Yeah. Lead okay. butterfly. It looks Someone big. <laughs> The advantage to having these waves to ourselves is that we're free to make big mistakes without consequences for our fellow surfers. But the thing about surfing out here, a mile from the beach, is that it's scary. Surfing is often a little scary. These waves were big for us. They held you down a little and you weren't really in control of when you could come up for air. So I got out about 20 minutes ago. I've been waiting for everyone to finish because I'm fucking miserable. I got sucked under, I swallowed two bellies full of water and it's just not, it's not worth it. And then I was just like alone. I came up and I was like, <gasps> I think I cried. I actually think that I wept a few tears and then I was just like, fuck this. So I'm not, I'm not having a good time today. It's like, I actually, I'm not even sure. I think I stood up for a minute, but like very small amount of joy. I'm just surrounded by a hard shell of misery and I'm freezing and I need a massage. Sam got spooked. We all get spooked when we leave our comfort zone. But when we do the thing that we're afraid to do, even if we fail, we get better, stronger, and braver. is to get the 10 bullets team to reach their goal, individually and collectively. It's just tough sitting with the uncertainty and like seeing the fear in his eyes of his job security. Uh. Pat had vouched for us. He had convinced the suits at Hurley that it was a good idea to sponsor a bunch of New York City creative types and send them 15 time zones away from home to make a movie about how to learn how to surf. And this team, this so-called team, was not only not learning how to surf, they were not even having the common decency to have fun not learning how to surf. We had made the mistake of treating surfing like work. Surfing is not work. This, this is work, or this. Surfing is play, which brings us to the genius of Sam's goal. My goal is to catch a wave and jump onto another surfer's board. Hey, 
Today makes up for the misery of merely drowning the other day. I had a really good time. My new goal is to ride the longest wave of my life. Coolest thing in the store. Coolest thing in the store. Above his talent for sculpture and art lies Tom's ability to find in any store the coolest thing in the store. We play this game all over the world. We're in this pharmacy because in one way or another, all of us are hurting. Most of us have Bali belly, which is a fancy term for good old fashioned diarrhea. But Sam has a hurt shoulder and a banged up foot. I have a rash on my thighs. Trevor has boo-boos on his knees. Tom, Tom's 51 years old. Basically, he's sore all over. These aches and pains are not injuries, really. They're simply scars of our labor. This is our bodies getting used to an activity that they're not accustomed to. I think I, think I found the coolest thing in the store. A sockadon. In my, in my heart, I know that we'll prevail. Regardless of the mansion, and the best teachers, and the fleet of three vehicles, and the board caddies, and the best equipment, and the puppies, regardless of our resources, there is a reality to learning. You must put in the hours. You hear a lot about this concept of the learning curve. The learning curve is basically a graph that shows you how long it takes to master a skill. Mr. Gladwell has taught us that to become an expert takes an investment of 10,000 hours. Trevor, Sarah, and Sam have fewer than 100 hours. Tom has over 1,000. This is the miserable part of the learning curve. Tom is just about to reach the fun part. Sonar is well within the fun zone. Tom just needs a little bit more time, and his fun will accelerate quickly. We just haven't earned it yet, baby. And yet... We had our moments. For our week of effort, we each got a couple minutes being the surfer we set out to be. For a couple of minutes or so, we looked good in the pictures. We rode the blue wave. We rode the longest wave of our life.
we reached our goals and had fun for a couple of minutes. That's our one percent inspiration. The rest was the sweat. Check, you don't clap, and take, and take, move back, be back again, what the fuck's there? My dancing armor!